Words from Isaiah 11, verses 1 and 2 and 10. The branch from Jesse. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, and his roots, a branch, will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. A reflection of these words can be found and heard in the carol that Wenda and Jeff will sing now, Lo, how a rose air blooming. We welcome you to our, our service this Christmas evening, our Christmas Eve worship. It's being held tonight here in, in Newburgh United Church. We canceled our, our drive through live nativity uh, work service this afternoon due to the uh, deluge of, of rain that's been coming down since very early this morning. So we had to cancel that due to the weather, but we brought some of our our animals with us that had been made for, for this afternoon, and they are on display here at the front, and we are happy to have them here. And um, this Christmas Eve worship, we welcome those who are joining us virtually and all who are here in, in person. May this be a time of, of praise and worship to God. Welcome to all of you who are here as we come to celebrate Christ's birth. And on behalf of myself and Doug and Andrew, we wish you all a blessed and safe uh, Merry Christmas. Our worship series throughout Advent has been entitled The Senses of Christmas. And tonight we complete that series uh, with the sights of Christmas. More about that in a little bit. We will be returning to worship online in the Newburgh and Centerville Pastoral Charge on January the 3rd, 2021. There will be no services uh, virtually or otherwise this coming Sunday, uh, December the 27th, online at all. So we, walk up, we look for you on the 3rd of January virtually, as we'll be going all online after tonight. We received a very lovely thank you from the Newburgh Camden Lions Club. I'll read it to you. Centerville United Church, Newburgh United Church. 
The Lions would like to thank you for your continued support in the collection of non-perishable food for needy families in our area. The families were overwhelmed with the amount of food they received, which will take them through the holiday season and beyond. Thank you. And that's from the Camden, the Newburgh Camden Lions Club. Those are the announcements I have. Is there anything else that I'm forgetting? O come, all ye faithful. The words will be on the screen, or number 60 in your hymn book. Let us turn to the screen for the prayer of approach and confession. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you stir in our hearts and bring joy to our lives. You stir in our minds and bring wisdom to our thoughts. You stir in the world and bring hope to our future. You came as a little child, stirring up our praises. So now we come to adore you with the angels to bow with the shepherds, to kneel in wonder with the Magi, to ponder your mystery with Joseph, and to love and cherish you with Mary. We come to you with humble hearts full of joy. Compassionate God, trusting in your love for us, we bring our prayers of confession. God of grace and truth, you give the gift of yourself but we are often caught up in giving and receiving our own gifts. You offer us new life in the baby born in Bethlehem, but we cloak that birth in sentiment and ignore the cost of new life. You shine in the world, but we dwell on the darkness around us. You came to us in flesh and blood, but we often fail to see you in the human lives beside us. 
forgive what we have been, shape who we are, and direct who we shall be. Through Christ our Savior we pray. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Walk in the assurance of God's grace and forgiveness. Be people of light and forgive one another as God has forgiven you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Tonight we complete our Advent wreath. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Rejoice, people of God, the light has come into the world. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and a child was, would bo be born to us. The evangelist Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly songs of the angels, glory, peace on earth, and goodwill. John declared that his, this great light is Christ, the word made flesh. This great light lives among us. By it we behold God's glory, full of grace and truth. At Christ's nativity, we now rejoice. O oh God, now we light the candle of your nativity. Let us sing about that light. Joy to the world, number 59 in your hymn book, three verses. Joy to the world. This is uh, the story of Christmas from the book of Luke. Chapter two, beginning at the second verse. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, 
Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The word of God. When did Jeff now sing? Twas in the moon of winter time.
God of mystery and manger, as we have listened to the familiar story of your coming among us as a child of flesh and blood, open our minds and hearts so that we may hear these wondrous events with new understanding, wisdom, and joy. Speak to us now in the spirit of this night. Speak to us your words, your message for us. May our hearts, our minds be open to your presence. And may these words speak your truth and be a blessing to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. Well, we finish our, our series on the senses of Christmas tonight. It's been a, an interesting year to do this series when all of our, our senses have been altered due to the pandemic to some, to some degree. The touch of Christmas this year is without that warm embrace of, of hugs or, or firm handshakes or the closeness of, of relatives. The smell of, of Christmas, the smell and taste of Christmas will be different for many of us as we may be finding ourselves, like myself, cooking uh, for ourselves this year rather than walking into someone else's home and enjoying the aromas and flavors already simmering in the kitchen. Or maybe you will have discovered new flavors on your own, new aromas to enjoy through this process. The sounds of Christmas are, are also different as we talk and sing mutedly behind masks. The newest Christmas greeting these days past Merry Christmas is stay safe and stay well. The sights of Christmas, our focus for tonight has also been altered. Our live drive through Nativity, which would have been earlier this evening had it not been for the torrential rain, would have seen you know, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise men all in masks, holding umbrellas through the rain. And probably hip waders probably wouldn't have been a bad idea either, considering the, the, the wet out there. The sights. The sights of, of Christmas this year show less traveling, hopefully, on the roads. Our gift to our loved ones and friends this Christmas is our effort not to unknowingly spread the virus, which means our absence from them physically, but not emotionally. To remain safe and well means distance apart, but held close and dear in our hearts just the same. This may be the Christmas with the most communication between loved ones. When we visit virtually or talk on the phone, there has to be words exchanged or there's just this, you know, pregnant silence. Sometimes when we visit in person, we show up, but we don't always visit with one another the same. We may see each other, but we don't necessarily engage or have a, a really good conversation. So communication may be on the rise this Christmas. But despite all these COVID-caused changes, the reason that there is Christmas and why we celebrate it does not change. We can feel sorry for ourselves, we can feel down and left out, but Christmas isn't about us, but about what God has done for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Let us in our minds now imagine the sights of that first Christmas in Bethlehem when Jesus was born. We begin by traveling with Mary and Joseph, a journey of approximately 70 miles. Mary was soon to give birth and the journey could not have been easy riding on a donkey, walking on that rough terrain. With no room left, would the site, no, you know, no, no Airbnbs and no Holiday Inns, there was just no room. So was the site of a stable 
What, what, what did that feel like? What was that like? Was it a welcome sight or was it, you gotta be kidding kind of sight? The stable probably contained more animals than people. Funny story of a Christmas pageant, children's pageant with a twist. Got it? John Simmons tells about a, a grade school class that was putting on a, a Christmas play, which included the story of Mary and Joseph going to the inn. In that class was one little boy who wanted so very much to be Joseph. I don't know what Mary looked like, but I, and I don't know if that was what was the issue, but anyway, he wanted to be Joseph. But when the parts were handed out, his biggest rival was given that part and he was assigned to be the innkeeper instead. He was really bitter about this whole thing, and so during all the rehearsals, he began to plot out how to get even with his rival. Finally, the night of the performance, Mary and Joseph came walking across the stage. They knocked on the door of the inn, and the innkeeper opened the door and asked them gruffly what they wanted. And Joseph answered, well, we'd like a room for the, in, in the, room for the, for the night. And suddenly the innkeeper threw out the, opened the door wide and said, great, come on in and I'll give you the best room in the house. That wasn't in the script. And for a few seconds, the poor little kid didn't know what to do. But finally, the young Joseph had an idea. So he stepped up to the innkeeper and he looked beyond him through the door that represented the inn and he made a, a big production of looking right and looking left and he stepped back and he, he looked at, his, his, at Mary beside him and he said, uh, no wife of mine is going to stay in a dump like this. Come on, Mary, let's go to the barn. There are times when Christmas doesn't go according to plan. What about the sight of the shepherds? The shepherds lived outside of the borders of the town and often worked, you know, two and three shifts. They were the lowest class of people. The land required the shepherds to lead the flock to running streams or to wells dug in the wilderness and furnished with troughs. At night, the shepherds brought the flock home to the fold, counting them as they passed under the rod at the door to assure none were left out. But on this particular night, angels come to them and share good news. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory shone over them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. They went, they worshipped, and spread the news of what they had seen and heard. What a sight that must have been. What a sight that must have been. These lowly shepherds sharing this great news. And the angels there, there they are, bright light, alarming, but holy light. And as quickly as they came, they were gone. And then there was the Magi. They saw and they followed the star. The star was the fulfillment of the prophecy in Numbers 24, verse 17. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all people of Seth. The sight of the gifts. It was customary to bring a king, a gift. Gold symbolized Jesus' presence as a king. The incense symbolized his presence as a deity, a god. The gift of myrrh symbolized the future that would come upon him. And the sight of the baby, all about peace, hope, joy, and love, wrapped up and in a manger in the stable. It is all about the incarnation. It is all about birth and death and resurrection. 
Christ came to us in time, was sacrificed on the cross, rose from the grave to restore our relationship with God. God in Christ is the source of grace for our lives. God in Christ is our source of forgiveness through faith in him, and we have the promise given to us of life eternal. That and more is what we celebrate this holy night. God comes to us in the flesh to be with us day to day. So untie the ribbons and receive him and know the true gift of grace, of truth, of eternal life. It's about the salvation of you and me. Unwrap the, gift, the ribbons of God's greatest gift and invite him into your hearts this Christmas. A time when we need him more than ever. Thanks be to God. Amen. And as the shepherds did on that night, shared the good news, we too are called to share the good news. Let us do that with the words of this next carol. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, that Jesus Christ is born. <laughs> Let us pray. God of hope and healing, as, we came to, as you came to us in love as the Christ child of Bethlehem, so we come to you with love and concern for the world. In this time of quiet and contemplation, we remember. We remember families that live close to the edge of survival, worrying about where their next meal will come from and where they will find shelter those who will spend Christmas alone or in hospital or weighed down by grief. We pray for those who work tonight while most of us rest. We pray for those who have lost their sense of joy and wonder and whose vision is clouded with cynicism or despair. We pray for those who face the year ahead with real fear and great anxiety because of the pandemic and the uncertainty that surrounds us. We pray for peace for our souls and comfort to those who live in real trepidation and tremendous anxiety. We pray for those who celebrate the birth of a new life a new love or a new way of being.
We hold up those whom we have loved and who have loved us, who now dwell in the eternal joy of your presence. God of all mercy and tenderness, child of the angels, may we sing your praise. Crown our celebrations this Christmas tide and bless our gatherings, whatever they may be, may we feel blessed. Whether our gatherings are in, are in person or at a distance. Help us know, O oh Lord, that you are near. We offer our prayers this night for Derek, for Eric, Burry and Norma, for Kathy, for Greg, whom we're grateful is now out of intensive care, for Joe and Nancy and Anna, and those who are recovering from surgery, those who are waiting and waiting to have surgery. Be with all those tonight, O oh Lord, who, who need your presence, who need your strength at this tumultuous time. In deep gratitude for all the gifts of this life, we gather our voices and pray the prayer that the child of Bethlehem taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. Often the very best gifts are given quietly even anonymously, and yet such gifts have the power to change lives. God's gift in the Christ child arrived in a small town, a humble stable, to a couple no one invited in, and still that gift changes lives. Our gifts to God this Christmas share in that miracle. Our offering will now be received. Generous and loving God, your gift to us in Christ Jesus still draws us to the manger and opens our hearts with wonder. Bless our gifts in his name so that they may draw others to your love and find the blessing we have discovered in the one born for us. Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. It's always at this uh, time of night that we share the light of Christ. This year, due to COVID and uh, distances we need to keep from each other, you've all received a, a little light with a battery in it tonight that we will light uh, as we uh, share the light of Christ as our light shines for one another. May this be our, our sharing in the light of Christ tonight as we together sing Silent Night, and we'll place the baby in the main. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Holy Lord Jesus, on a wondrous night you sent your Son to take on frail human flesh in order that all who believe in him might be saved. You sent angels to herald his birth in Bethlehem and a star to proclaim it to the ends of the earth. Send us now as messengers of your good news and proclaimers of your peace. May we go forth into this holy night and may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit guide your way, light your path. Things will be different this year, but our Lord God is constant and always with us and will guide our way. The blessings of God be with you this night and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.